Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support. But before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. All right. So what I want you to do right now is relax yourselves, get your libations on and get your diet food on. That's right. I said diet food. Put the hamburger down. Get your diet food on, and let's take a look at our hidden history, and I'll come right back with today's very important broadcast. Russian icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov. I'm going to show you the images of Christ and the apostles being black in Russia during the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. Picture 52, Descent of the Holy Ghost. Moscow Archaeology. Let's look at picture 52. There's Christ in the center with the crown on his head. And you have the 12 apostles. Let's start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And there's Christ in the center. What color are they? Black. They're all black. Black men. The Jews were always black, according to bibliography and the history. Sixty three, the Apostle and Evangelist Saint Matthew Black. Miracle of the Great Martyr, St. George and the Dragon. So St. George the Dragon Slayer. So you see the, mov the movies at, with white men slaying dragons. No, it was our ancestor. There's a, a young Leviathan at the bottom. That's what dragons were called in the Bible, Leviathans. And there's Christ giving him the Holy Spirit to go forth and win the battle. Black. What color are they? Black. Apostles Peter and Paul with scenes from their lives. 
Novgorod, Museum of Art History and Architecture. Black. Even look around the sides. The Ministry of Peter and Paul. They were always painted black. These are things uh, young black men and women don't learn in church or anywhere, except from the Israelites. That's when he's crucified one of them upside down. I believe this was Peter. Picture 19, Wisdom Hath Built Her House, Monastery of St. Cyril near Novograd, Moscow. What is this? Wisdom Hath Built Her House. What color are these Jews? Black men, black, wiz black women. Look at that. There's no mistake in this. Picture 18, Transfiguration of the Lord, Novograd, 15th century, that's the 1400s, Museum of Art, History, and Architecture. The three disciples, Peter, James, and John, asleep. Okay, there's Christ in the center. Moses holding the tablets. And Elijah, black, black. As you can see, this book was copyrighted in 1927. Alexander VI, as he appears in the fresco of the resurrection on the walls of the Bourget apartments in the Vatican. So that's Alexander the Sixth of Rome, Pope Alexander the Sixth. Rodrigo Borgia, Rodrigo Borgia, known among the popes as Alexander the Sixth, a rare etching of Caesar Borgia, firstborn son of Alexander the Sixth. Some books have him as the second son. It's neither here nor there, but that's him as an adult, Caesar Borgia's. A base relief of the Madonna and Child, that's Mary and Christ. Madonna and Child is Mary and Christ. Posed for by Rosa Venosa and her infant Valentino, later Caesar Borgia, of which Alexander VI was the acknowledged father. So baby Caesar posed for baby Jesus. And that's his mama there. Profile of bust of San Salvatore. The word San Salvatore means Saint Savior, which is Christ. Posed for by Caesar Borgia. That's Caesar Borgia posed as the Savior. Caesar Borgia, excuse me, Caesar as he grew to manhood, developed a craze for seeing himself immortalized in marble and on canvas. He was possessed of the notion that he resembled the Savior. Such was the mania of this, the most fiendish of all the Borgias, to be modeled for the sacred figure that he posed on one occasion for a head crowned with thorns. The original of this bust was found in the church of San Salvatore in Ternus, now destroyed. 
It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. See the crown of thorns? He's supposed to be Christ. This is the Renaissance Jesus that everybody prays to. Bust of the Savior posed for by Caesar Borgias. There's your Jesus. There's your Savior. I'm going to read from here. Did not one of them open his mouth and tell their criminal colleague that he was not the vicar of Christ, meaning the Borges was not the replacement of Christ, but the Antichrist, <laughs> meaning against the true Christ. Okay, we're talking about Rosa Venosa now. Rosa Venosa, who before and after her association with Borges, lived not far away. Shortly after the birth of Caesar Borges, she posed for an artist in the part of the Madonna with Caesar as the Bambino. That means baby, the baby Christ. Bambino means baby. Look at here. The muse of history must have been in her most ironic mood when she permitted the face of Caesar Borgia to appear as the patron saint, referring to Christ, on the walls of a penal institution. Let's jump down to here. Likeness of both Caesar and his sister Lucretia, as well as of Alexander VI himself, appear in various guises in the frescoes, that means paintings, of Pinterichio, that's an artist, both on the ceiling of the church of Santa Maria del Popolo and in the Borgia apartments in the Vatican. Portrait of Caesar Borgia attributed to Raphael. So the artist Raphael here painted Caesar Borgia when he got a little older. Caesar Borgia as Cardinal. There's Lucrezia Borgia. She's often posed for uh, Mother Mary, the Madonna. Now, that was some good stuff, if I do say so myself. That's some good history, and it's going to play a very important role in today's commentary. Today's commentary is going to be on the book of Clarence, written and directed by James Samuel, produced by none and only Jay-Z. Okay, so what we're going to do, I want you all to think back for me. Just think back in time a little bit. I don't know how old you are, but just think back to March. 1969, Ebony Magazine almost went bankrupt, okay, because black people refused to accept a black Jesus on the cover of the magazine. Black people threatened to cancel their subscriptions and went so far as sending pictures in to Ebony of a white Jesus to replace the black Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. They refused to see themselves as the Israelites, as the people of God, as God's chosen people. Now, you might say there is no chosen people in the word of God, but there is. When you go to, there are many scriptures, but I'm just going to pull one. First Chronicles 16, verse 13. O ye seed of Jacob, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. You see that? His chosen ones. Now I'm going to go to Isaiah. Watch this. Isaiah 44 and verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. So God does have chosen people. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, everybody's a child of God. Nah. Watch this. I'm going to go to the New Testament just for you. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, and I'm going to start at verse 6. And it reads, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Meaning what? All you Israelites, you blacks and Latinos, you won't repent. You won't wake up to the truth. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. What does that mean? 
Abraham had children from Hagar. He also had children from Keturah. Those children are not children of God. That's what it means when it says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, meaning they're not children of God. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God's looking for the chosen seed to come from Isaac. Where are we reading? The New Testament, verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, meaning all the other nations, these are not the children of God. Let's read that part again. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, meaning all the other nations, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the promise are the Israelites. When you jump back up to verse 4, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So the chosen seed, the children of God, are the Israelites that went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. It's not everybody. Everybody's not the children of God. Yes, God created everybody, but guess what? Everybody's not the chosen. Everybody's not the children of God. So what have I just proven? In this very short time, all your churches have been lying to you. So let's go on. Do you think things have changed in black Christian churches from 1969 to now, 2024, do you think things have changed, especially amongst black Christians? Mm. Let's take a look at a clip regarding lukewarm Christians, which sum up the entire black Christian world. Take a look. I'm a lukewarm Christian. Of course I read the Bible, I just don't apply it to my life. I'm a lukewarm Christian. Of course I take surrendering to Christ as a suggestion. I love him, but not that much. I'm a lukewarm Christian. Of course I love the world and the things of it. Jesus loves me, so it's fine. I'm a lukewarm Christian. Of course God called me to smoke weed, drink, and cuss with my friends. It's the way that I minister to them. Duh. I'm a lukewarm Christian. Of course I don't have any friends that challenge my walk with Christ. They are so judgmental. Now, you'll often hear... Christians lie when they say color doesn't matter. It's his message that counts. I've, I've heard that all my life. Color don't matter. It's his message. Well, I'm going to show you that that too is a lie. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm going to read verse 4. Watch this. Listen. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, meaning if somebody comes preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Let's, let's think about that. Does the Bible preach about a Caucasian pink-skinned Jesus with yellow hair and blue eyes? If it does, I want the book, chapter, and verse. I want the book, chapter, and verse that says Jesus had pink skin, yellow hair, and blue and green eyes. Should I wait? I know it's not in there. But let's read it again. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit. So what comes with preaching another Jesus? Another spirit. A demonic spirit. A spirit of devils. Let's read on. Which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted. So think about it. So what comes with another Jesus? Another spirit and another gospel. So if you got a false Jesus, you got a false spirit, and you got a false gospel. I'm going to read the whole verse in its entirety without it, it interrupting anything. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. We bear with you Christians by correcting you in the word of God. Not only do you have a false Jesus, you have a false spirit and you got a false gospel. You think the man that enslaved us, enslaved us, oppressed us, oppresses us, can teach us about the good news of Jesus Christ? No, it's impossible. Okay, impossible. So again, for all you 
that say color doesn't matter, lying Christians, how come when a movie or advertisement or editorial comes out or some teaching about Jesus being black, you scream blasphemy, you mad, you pissed off, you mad angry, huh? Because color doesn't matter, right? Except when there's a black Christ. You bunch of liars, you. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I want to show you a group of Christians. And I want you to take a good look at them. So I don't know their names, but they have done documentaries, or not documentaries, excuse me. They've done commentaries. They do Christian commentaries all the time. Some of them delve into politics at times. But what I want you to see is how they've all unified against any movie pushing a black Jesus Christ. You got this first guy where it says Jay-Z's new Christian movie has a hidden agenda. Okay, you can't make this stuff up. Now, people like this that says there's a satanic uh, message that's being exposed, you got to go to his other videos and see what's his background like. Hmm? You'll find out that guys like this are married to the white woman. That's right, they're married to Miss Ann. Take a look. He talks about my story, how racism almost ruined my marriage. Take a look. This dude, this is what it means. They are not all Israel, which are of Israel. They break every commandment in the book, okay? And they stand for nothing but white supremacy. Take a look at him. Take a look at his wife. That's why you got to pull the curtain back. See what's, what fuels his obnoxious rhetoric. Look at this video he did. Three quick reasons Christianity is not the white man's religion. Look at this. Make America great again. Ain't got a white Jesus. That he cannot prove nor substantiate in the holy scriptures. Again. See, the days of Israelites proving that we are the people of the book, we've done that and we've just We've proven it and disproved all of you. Now it's up to you, Christians. Prove Jesus is Caucasian. Prove the Jews in Israel, those white people in Israel, prove according to the biblical text that they are the people of the book with pink, red skin, brown, blue, and green eyes, brown, brown, yellow, black hair. Prove it! Straight hair. Prove it. I want to read book, chapter, and verse for all you bunch of liars. Now, none of them will respond to this because there's no Bible verse they can go to that proves Christ had pink, red skin, yellow hair, and blue or green eyes. No Bible verse, straight hair, they can't prove it. So now look at this next video that this same dude did crying for racist white Christians. The sobering final words of a Christian leader. Look at his leader, a Caucasian man. Do you think they'll ever give an honest view of anything black? Do you think they will commend anything black? No, his wife is Caucasian. His leader is Caucasian. His God is Caucasian. Look at this. They, they, he stands for the Israelis annihilating Palestine. Look, they're lying about the land with Robert Spencer. You can't make this stuff up. Look at this next coon, raccoon. Okay, I'll say raccoon since I don't want to offend any of you. Look, the book of Clarence. Friday meets the passion of the Christ. Great. See, he's calling this, this movie Friday. You can't make this stuff up. Okay, look at it. These coons really make me want to vomit. Look at this next one. The book of failure. And look at, the, look at the coon. Look at the coon. Look at him. Look at the next one. Opens at number nine. Flip-flop, the black woman. The book of Clarence tanks and box office. Why? Because black people don't support anything black. You only support what your slave master tells you to support. Look at this next one. This is bad. Is Jay-Z's The Book of Clarence blasphemous? I mean, you can't make this, this stuff up. Look at this next one. Why the Book of Clarence deserves to fail from society reviews. Look at society reviews. An overweight brother with the American flag behind him and a Christian cross of death and crucifixion. Look at this next one. I am the new Messiah. 
Jay-Z mocks Christians in Bible movie. Geno Je I always knew Geno Jennings was a huckster, a, a, a coon. Always knew it. Now you all knowing it now, too. Look at this next one. I don't know this dude's name at all. But as soon as I saw him, look at Jay-Z movie mocking Jesus flops at box office. I saw the movie. It is not mocking Christ. What the hell are these people talking about? Coons! Black coons. And I'm sure there's some Latinos out there. Look at this guy. The devil would be proud. Jay-Z releases blasphemous Bible movie mocking Christians. Oh, come on, dude. Stop it. Stop it. Now, watch this. Let me get it. Hold on. Hold on. White society hates and rejects a black Jesus the Christ. Now, we know according to the Aramaic or the Hebrew's name is Yahushai or Yehoshua. We know that. But we're speaking English. We need everybody to understand what we're talking about. Okay. Again, so white society hates and rejects a black Jesus, a savior for black people. They hate that thing. Even the thought that the race they enslaved could very well be the Israelites, the children of God. They despise that thing. Take a look at this. Look at these articles. The Book of Clarence removed from the UK release calendar. You can't make this stuff up. Look at this next one. Legendaries, the Book of Clarence moved off United Kingdom's release schedule. It says uh, they stopped the January release in Europe. The movie was supposed to be released in January. They stopped it, and they said it might be released in May. They wanted to see how black people respond first. But black people ain't going to see it. Why? Because black people only love their slave master, a white Jesus. Okay? I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Let me show you something. How white people feel about black, the black image. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. And I'm going to read verse 15. This is what the ungodly say about Israelites, our people. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. Look at that first part. He is grievous unto us even to behold. They despise the way black people look. They hate our Afro hair, our wool hair. They hate our skin that's burned in a furnace. They hate the size of our nose, the size of our lips. And you Christians can't figure that out yet. You think you're loved because one marries you. You simple as hell. Let me show you some color script. I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 21. This is the prophet Jeremiah. This is what he says about himself. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. What did Jeremiah say? I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. So the prophet Jeremiah gives you his color. He says he's black. Hmm? Let me give you another one. Let me go to Lamentations. Chapter 4 and verse 8. This is what Jeremiah has written also. Their visage, the word visage means their countenance, their faces. Their visage is blacker than a coal. What color is a coal? Black. Black. Not, not Caucasian looking. Let's read that again. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets, meaning they are not known as the Israelites. They're not recognized. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. Why? There was a famine. It is withered. It has become like a stick. There was a famine in Jerusalem. Okay, but the point is their visage is blacker than a coal. That's what I wanted you all to see. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. A song of songs which is... Solomon's. Why do I want verse 1? Because it tells you who wrote this song. The song of songs, which is Solomon's. Now verse 5. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So here in verse 5, King Solomon, the king of Israel, a Jew of the tribe of Judah. That's where the word Jew comes from, Judah. He says, I am black. He says he's comely, meaning good looking. So all through the Bible, there are color references. Okay, now I'm going to give you Christ, whom you claim you love. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, about Christ, his description. 
His head and his hairs were white like wool. What type of texture did he have? Wool hair, afro hair, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a, lamp, as a flame of fire. Why? Because in Genesis 49, verse 12, it says his eyes shall be red with wine. Then it says, uh, verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. As if they burned in a furnace. Now you take that brown brass and you burn it. What color does it get? Black. And his voice has the sound of many waters, meaning he spoke loud with authority. Hmm? And then you all say color doesn't matter. I read, I read one, two, three, four color scriptures. And there's a plethora more. But you reject every one and go, no, he's white. Or you say color don't matter. But as soon as you see a black Christ on the movie screen or a tabloid or in the media, no, no blasphemy. That's what you all do. You bunch of black Christian liars, every last one of you, including your mothers and fathers. Now, I'm going to go to Luke chapter one. I know I'm talking about, I'm getting to the commentary. Bear with me. I just got to lay this foundation first. Luke chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 68 down. It reads, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Not everybody, his people. Verse 69, And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. The horn of salvation is Christ, Jesus the Christ. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So all the prophets since Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, prophesied about the coming Messiah. Verse 71, that we, not everybody, we, that we should be saved from our enemies, saved from the white man. During the time that this was written, it was talking about Rome, first and foremost. So now here in America, it's America and all the other nations who have us captive. Verse 71, again, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that right there? The hand of all that hate us. They hate our hair texture. They hate the complexion of our skin. They hate our smell. They hate the size of our nose, our lips, our history. They hate everything about us. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what the Bible is saying right so now, let's take a look at this first article regarding the book of Clarence. And I'm going to read it. It reads, the title says, Blasphemous, the book of Clarence, filmed by backed, film backed by rapper Jay-Z, pushes black Hebrew Israelites propaganda with race swapped Jerusalem by some coon named Jacob Smith. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Now, y'all can read the article on your own. I just wanted to show y'all the, the title of it. Okay. Now, let's take a look and see what the director, James Samuel, says himself on The Breakfast Club regarding the movie. Take a look. What's up, especially with this movie. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. At the teaser, at a 60 second teaser, we drop a 60 second teaser and everyone says blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Envy. Matthew 24, five. Mm -hmm. Jesus' exact words are, many shall come in my name saying I am the Christ and they shall deceive many. The Bible itself speaks of Simon the sorcerer who was trying to pay his way into the apostles. The Bible itself speaks of Simon the Sorcerer. In Jesus' lifetime, in his 33 years of being on the planet, there was two to 300 people coming and saying that they're the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You only have to do a, a Google check. Now, I knew people would um, be saying that when they, when they look at the teaser. We released a longer trailer and it was less, right? But now when you say blasphemy, you have to stand on it. Mm -hmm. I wanna know why you're saying blasphemy. Is it because you're seeing people of color? And if I'm speaking to, to a person of color, I'm going to ask a deep question. Mm. When you look at the trailer for, because you haven't seen the movie, when you look at the trailer for the book of Clarence and you're yelling blasphemy, one, do you actually read the book you profess to know so much about? Mm. Two, and this is to all black people that yell, yelling blasphemy. Mm. Are you saying blasphemy because you see yourself in that place and time? 
because I'm showing people in that place and time as the same color as you. We are so trained to dismiss anything we see as, as either blasphemy or in this day and age, the Illuminati. Now you saw it for yourself. I want you all to think about it. Take a minute and think. Do you think your oppressors support films about black revolution as God's chosen people, the Israelites, the real Jews? Do you really think Hollywood would support that? You saw how much trouble they gave uh, Nate Parker about birth of a nation. They gave him hell. Hmm? I want you to think of all the Hollywood films, okay? Think about revolutionary films with a black messiah. Christ as the black man. The Israelites as black living in Jerusalem under Roman white man occupation. Think about it. Hollywood don't want to show stuff like that. Let's take a look at the trailer now for the book of Clarence. Let's take a look at the trailer. I'm here to enlighten you. Hallelujah. Oh. When you see me, say hallelujah. I'm Clarence. Where I'm from, you fight to survive. I'm not a bad person. Just playing the cards I was dealt. Mom, one day I'm going to get you out of here. I have a plan. What are we doing here? Jesus lives there. Hallelujah, baby. I want to be like that in 10 years. I want to be like that now. I need to figure out what inspires him. I can just replicate what he does. Imagine the money people will give us. Hallelujah. Holy shit, I get high as Buddha. Put you on that highway to heaven like I'm your Uber. Oh, dead one, open your eyes. Elijah. Oh! What are you trying to prove? And I'm not a nobody. You find faith. And you will find all the answers. When you see me, say hallelujah. Clarence, you are guilty of the crime fraud for your own ill-gotten gains. If you give me Jesus of Nazareth, I will let you walk free. And I will give you power, wealth. You will be somebody. I die before I give him up to Rome. Then death it is. Uh. My congregation gonna operate like a corporation. I want my flowers and flower vases. I want carnations. I want begonias. I want petunias and flower plumes. Run! Cause I'm a god, so when you see me, say hallelujah. Lance, in spite of your selfish ways, there is a beautiful soul in there somewhere. Hallelujah, and I'm a god, so when you see me, say hallelujah. Jesus of Nazareth. I'm a god, so when you see me, say hallelujah. I'm destined to be here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Damn. Hallelujah, baby. Yeah. Uh. All right, so now, the cast includes Lakeith Stanfield, R.J. Uh, Siler, James McAvoy, Tiana Taylor, Babs, Alusinamoku, Omar Sai, Benedict Cumberbatch, Caleb McLaughlin, Nicholas Pinnock, Anna Diop, Michael Ward, David Oyelu, Eric Kofi Abrefa, Tom Glenn Carney, Alfre Wooded, so forth. Oh, and Marianne Jean, Jean Baptiste, so forth and so on. You can see it right there on the screen. Okay. Now, Vanity Fair did an article with Jay-Z regarding the Book of Clarence. And I'm just going to read two sections of it. And it reads, it says, as a producer, Jay-Z says he was most concerned that those who hear about the film and its premise might immediately just focus on the religious aspect of it and not the human story, he says. Though Clarence may be full of doubt about the Messiah in the beginning, he's forced to find his faith as the story moves on. The film doesn't make fun of religion or the biblical stories, but rather attempts to expand that world. My fear is that people don't allow the, that arc to take place and are immediately judging, says Jay-Z. He notes he's been on calls with studio execs where someone will accidentally call it a faith-based movie, but faith is only a backdrop, he says. This story is about a young man who finds his faith through love and through wanting to become somebody in the world, which is the story of everybody. 
Everyone wants to find love and everyone wants to leave this place having accomplished something, having left their mark that they've been here and hopefully affected the world in a positive way. Okay. So now let's, I'm going to show you some clips about what Jay-Z says on video regarding the movie. I guess the most surprising thing was um, like there, there's a there's a part in the film where Clarence walks on water and it's really just a metaphor for all of us. We've all had those walk on water moments where you say, man, I can't believe that happened to me. You know that this person knew him and knew him and just all of a sudden like I, it doesn't always have to be dangerous because I've had those those moments as well. It's just a metaphor for times where things you unexplainable things happen to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, um, James, uh, I think we should give a round of applause for James. <laughs> I've never met anyone who uh, speaks so many different languages so well. Like, usually something suffers. Like, you know, you make music and then you try to act and then it turns out like um, the streets is watching. <laughs> But um, um, that's a classic though. Um, classic. Good classic, good classic. Um, but thank you very much. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um, but he does everything so well, composing, writing, directing, and his what I what most impressive, um, his fearlessness um, to tackle different stories and subjects, and also you know placing us rightfully so in the places that we belong. You know, we started with the the, the um, OS, and now we're in the New Testament. Boss. All right, all right. So you saw it for yourself. Now I don't, I don't. None of y'all fix your black ashy lips to say Jay Z's. He's Illuminati. You can't believe him. Listen, listen. In December, I'm gonna say something profound. Listen, good. In December 2022, there was a film called Black Adam, starring The Rock. Okay. It came out and nobody screamed Illuminati. Not one of those coon Christians that I just showed you screamed Illuminati at all. Now, watch this. In 2023, there was war between Israel and, Gaza, and the Gaza Strip and a crackdown on protesters and women in Iran. Now, was I the only one that saw the all-seeing eye? being displayed throughout the Black Adam movie? Was I the only one that saw it? I knew something was going to happen. I knew something was going to pop off in the Middle East. The Middle East fictional country called, what is it, Kandar or Kandak. It had the United States send over the Justice Society to fight one of the only Arab heroes called Black Adam. But nobody seen the Illuminati symbols. Nobody did a video about it. Now, did you see the Illuminati symbols there? Huh? Nobody screamed Illuminati. Not one of you fixed your black, ashy Christian lips and screamed Illuminati. Not one. But we did, and things popped off in the Middle East. We knew they were sending messages. But you go, no, the Israelites, no, 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 black Jesus, don't listen to these guys. No, 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 no. You go find out we the prophets. You gonna find out you and your mothers and fathers and your sons and daughters. You're going to find out we are the prophets. So anyway, I digress. Back to the book of Clarence. The story takes place around 33 AD, the last year just before Christ is crucified. Uh, Clarence is the twin brother of the apostle Thomas. Yes, doubting Thomas was a twin. Some of y'all mad. You upset. Thomas didn't hang no twin. Joshua Palmer, Thomas don't hang no twin. You simple as hell. You simple. Both parts were played by Lakeith uh, Stanfield. Judas uh, from, remember, he played Judas and the Black Messiah. He played in Get Out and the Changeling. I'm going to read John 11, 16. It reads, Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, Unto his fellow disciples, let us go also that we may die with him. They were going to go see uh, Lazarus. But the word Didymus is Greek. What does it mean? Twin. It means twin. You can look at, I'm going to show you several translations right now. King James Bible, look, it says Didymus. New King James Version, it says, Then Thomas, who was called the twin. 
Uh, look at Christian Bible Standard, then Thomas called twin. Holman Christian Standard Bible says, then Thomas called twin. Look at uh, Aramaic Bible in plain English. Thomas, who was called the twin. And contemporary English version, it says, Thomas, whose nickname was twin. So a lot of you Christians got upset because the apostle Thomas has a twin. You thought Jay-Z made that up. You thought the director, uh, James Samuel, made that up. Y'all don't read the Bible. You don't read the Bible. Now, let's take a look at John chapter 20, verse 24. I'm going to read about Thomas. I'm going to read about him and why many times people often call him Doubting Thomas. And it reads, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. You see that? I will not believe. Now, verse 26, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Now, you find that all throughout the movie, the book of Clannis, they say, peace be unto you, which is shalom. Okay, verse 27. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. So Christ was letting Thomas know he had a faithless spirit, faithless. Verse 20. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Verse 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So think about it. If Thomas was doubtful regarding Christ's resurrection, his twin now, his twin would have a very similar spirit. And he does. Not only does he doubt Christ is the Messiah, he does not believe in God at all. He's an atheist. That's the premise of the film. That's the character of um, Clarence in this movie, the book of Clarence. So when you look at the movie, Clarence is a loser. He's a drug user. He gambles. He smokes weed. And he loves a woman he can never have because he's about nothing. Clarence is basically a loser. He's a nobody trying to become somebody so that he can marry the woman he loves. The woman, her name is Variana, played by Anna Diop. Anna Diop plays in, played in Greenleaf. She also played in the movie Us, and she also plays in Titans as the character Starfire. Lovely sister, lovely, lovely. The movie shows the Israelites smoking weed. There's whores all around, and there's people, brothers robbing and stealing and killing. A lot of you don't like that truism. Yes, I said truism. It's, it's, it's true. That's how it was back then. That's how it is today here in America and even in the UK and wherever we are. Yes, we smoke. Our people smoke weed. Our women twerk. They have, they're whoremongers. Uh, we rob. We steal. We're a mess of a people. Now, you might say, that ain't in the Bible. Okay, watch this. Hosea chapter 4. I'm going to read verse 1. And we'll read down. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Who is he speaking to? The children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Now I'm going to pause there. In the film, Clarence makes a distinction between knowledge and belief. He says throughout the film, knowledge is greater than belief. And that was his premise also in his, when he becomes a self-proclaimed Messiah. But I'll, I digress. Let's read on verse 2. It reads on about the Israelites. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priests. 
Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Jerusalem was destroyed. Why do you think 70 AD came? Hmm? Because we were walking around Jerusalem being so righteous, being so holy. No, it tells you what we were doing. It said we had no mercy, no truth, no knowledge of God. It, we were swearing, we were lying, we were killing, we were stealing, we were committing adultery. And blood touched blood. We were horrible. Take that and think about our people today in America. Do we show mercy to one another? Do we swear falsely? Is there truth among us? Hmm? Do we lie? Do we kill one another? Do we swear? Hmm? Do we mourn? Are we committing adultery? Hmm? Yeah. That's us, you twerkers, you whoremongers. That's us, that's our people, we're the Israelites. That in itself proves we're the people of the book. That proves we're the people of the book. So here's a brothel from the film. I'm going to show you some clips. I didn't want to get a strike, so I'm going to show you some still clips. Here's a whore flipping in the club. Okay, and you got whoremongers just like today. Just take a look. You mad at the film, but it's true, just like today. So now, one day Clarence sees the 12 apostles and Christ. Take a look at them. Clarence sees power, authority, respect, protection, fame, and money. He doesn't see holiness. He doesn't see righteousness. He does not see loyalty or unity or salvation or even the Son of God. He sees what every Christian preacher sees. All he sees is money, power, respect. Money, power, respect. That's what Clarence saw when he saw Christ and the 12 apostles. And that's the same thing you black Christian pre preachers see. I'm a, can I prove that in the Bible? Let's go to Micah. Chapter 3, verse 11. It reads, The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they say, Lean upon the Lord, and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come among us. Though it was all about money. I'm going to give you another one, in case that one ain't good enough for you. I'm going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 56, Isaiah 56, verse 10 and 11, and it reads, His watchmen, talking about you black preachers and ministers, his watchmen are blind, you are spiritually blind. They are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. A dog barks to warn the people. You can't, you ministers can't bark, you can't prophesy and tell us what's going to happen. It says, Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, there are greedy dogs which can, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. You can't understand the scriptures. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain. See that? Everyone for his gain from his quarter. That's how Clarence was. That's how you ministers are today. You're all about the money, about the Benjamins. Let's go to Jeremiah. 23 and verse 14. Jeremiah 23, 14 reads, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. That's what the movie showed you. That's how our people are here today in America too. They strengthen also the hands of evil doers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. You see how that says? You see what that says? That's how it was in the movie, The Book of Clarence. That's how it is here in America, in the UK, and wherever our people are scattered. It's the same spirit on all of us, our people. Let's go to Matthew 15. New Testament. New Testament. Matthew chapter 15, and I'm going to start at verse 7. And it reads, this is Christ speaking. He, this is what he says to the people of Israel. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, 
but their heart is far from me. What does that mean? You all say you believe in God. You all say you believe in Jesus. You all say you love the Lord, but you won't obey commandment one. You do nothing this Bible says. That's what it means when it says, but their heart is far from me. Verse nine, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You teach for doctrine the commandments of men. What men do you follow? White men. Whether it's Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness, uh, Holiness, uh, Born Again Baptist, uh, um, Protestant, Mormon, Roman Catholic, you all follow doctrines of white men. Let me read it again. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's y'all today. That's y'all today. So now, moving on. Clarence tries to become the 13th apostle, even if he had to pay to join. He goes to them. He offers them money. He tells them he wants to join, and they tell him, no, it doesn't work like that. How do Think about that. How do people become apostles or ministers or preachers today? I want you all to think about it. Hmm? They have to pay. They have to go to theology school. They have to go to Bible college or seminary schools. I call them cemetery schools. That's how they do. That's the same thing Clarence was trying to do. Pay for an education. Pay to be amongst them. It's the same spirit, brothers and sisters, just like during the time of Christ. Oh, you don't think that happened during the time of Christ? Watch, let's go to John 7. John chapter 7, verse 15. Pay close attention. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? What is that telling us? That Christ had an understanding beyond the scribes, beyond the Pharisees and Sadducees and those priests. What does it mean, having never learned? They had schools set up to teach people the scriptures. Just like today, you got Bible college, theology school, divinity school, cemetery school. It's the same thing, the same racket. Hmm. Let me give you some more. I'm, I'm not done yet. Acts 13 and 1. I'm proving my point. Acts 13 and 1. Watch this. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. N-I-G-E-R means, it's Latin, it means black, that was called black. Oh, that pisses you Christians off again, right? That the prophets were called black. Mm -hmm. And Lucius of Cyrene, where's Cyrene? North Africa. And Manain, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Who Saul? He later became known as Paul. What does it mean he was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch? I'm going to show you. Go to Acts 26 to explain what does it mean they were brought up together. Acts 26, I'm going to read verse 1 to 3 about Agrippa. Agrippa was a relative of Herod. I'm going to say it again. Agrippa, King Agrippa, was a relative of Herod the Tetrarch. Acts 26 and 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Paul is the same one we just read about, Saul. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Wait a minute. How is King Agrippa expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. How was he expert? He went to school with the Jews. He had to learn the Jews' customs, the laws. He had to learn it all, just like Herod the Tetrarch was brought up with Saul, who later became known as Paul. Oh, you never learned that history in your Bible college, in your divinity school? in your cemetery school. It's right there. So now, 
Clarence gets addressed in the film by Judas Iscariot, played by Michael Ward. Michael Ward played in a good film called Top Boy, Empire of Light, and The Old Guard. Judas Iscariot tells Clarence to prove his devotion by embarking on an impossible quest. He tells Clarence to prove your sincerity. Why don't you free the gladiatorial slaves? Clarence has the fight to free one slave, Barabbas. But seeing those slaves makes a powerful impression on him. And when he has a choice between helping himself later on in the film and helping those slaves, woo! Sometime later, he makes the sacrificial act of choosing to free his people held as slaves by using all the wealth he acquires. So, the deal of free and slave, you must defeat Barabbas, possibly the same Barabbas exchanged for Christ in the Gospels. Clarence can fight good now. When you see the book, when you see the movie, Clarence can fight pretty good, decently. And he defeats Barabbas and gets Barabbas his freedom. That's what he does. So he goes back to the apostles and he still is not allowed to join because Clarence doesn't believe in the Messiah. He does not believe Christ is Messiah. He still does not believe in God. So they send Clarence out, okay? So Clarence decides to become a fake Messiah, but he must learn all of Jesus's tricks, as he calls them. So what, is, what does he do? He goes to visit John the Baptist to get baptized. He wants to follow the steps of Christ. He goes, meets John the Baptist, played by David Ole, Ole, Yo, Ole Yowa. Ole Yowa. <laughs> Y'all know him. He played in Selma. He played in Bass Reeves. And he played the butler. Good actor. And then after he visits John the Baptist, he goes to see Mary, the mother of Christ, played by Alfre Woodard. You know, she starred in The Family That Prays. She played, she starred in Crooklyn and Primal Fear. They discuss the immaculate deception, as we call it, the immaculate deception. It's a good scene. Sex or no sex? Did the angel do it or did Joseph do it? In the movie, they throw out both concepts. <laughs> but we know, according to scripture, there was sex involved. Woo! That's right. Verse 1 through 17 gives Christ physical, fleshly descendants through Joseph. Frustrated with the answers he gets from Mary, he decides to become a fake Messiah and do fake tricks to fool the people. Why? Remember, he wants the girl. To get the girl, he needs the money, he needs fame, he needs the fortune, he needs the respect. Okay? So, he follows the example in a book of Acts. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. See, y'all mad because the writer made this Clarence up, this fictional character. However, the writer, the author, the director tells you is based on the biblical context. I'm going to show you one, for example. Acts chapter 5. And I'm going to read verse 34. Acts 5, verse 34. Then stood up, then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. You see that right there? During the time of Christ on, you had a lot of fake messiahs, a lot of people boasting themselves to be messiah. So that's just one example. I'm going to give you another one, Acts chapter 8. I'm going to read Acts chapter 8, and I'm going to start at verse 9. It reads... But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, 
because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent it to the, unto them Peter and John. Now I'm going to jump down. I'm going to jump down to verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. That's the same thing Clarence did in the film. So what you mad for? What you screaming blasphemy for? Y'all simple as hell. Let's get some more. So Clarence does some, some tricks with his best friend Elijah, opening blind eyes, raising the dead. These are tricks that Elijah does for him. Here's some clips. You can see it. It's a comedy. Remember, it's a comedy. It's some funny stuff. So doing all of these fake tricks, Clarence begins to get a following. He also begins to get money from the people, which is what he always wanted. When you see the film, Clarence has a motto. Knowledge is greater than belief. Knowledge is greater than belief. And it sounds good to the listener. And he gets a lot of people to follow behind. It's just like you preachers on Sunday. You get your shtick when you're in the pulpit to say this or say that. And it sounds real good. I'm going to read 2 Peter 2.18. For, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity. Another word for vanity is bullsh. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, meaning the servants of sin. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. It's the same for Clarence. He was still in the midst of his sin. The people that followed him were still in the midst of his sin. Just like in church, Sunday school, even in the committed community, some of y'all talk very well. You're still in the midst of sin, in sin. And you bring yourself as always, you're still in bondage and your followers are in bondage. All right. So look at Clarence with his followers. He gets a lot. Okay, look at 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them. What does that part mean? Even denying the Lord that brought them. You reject the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Revelation 1, 14 and 15. And you fuse in a Caucasian man with pink red skin, blonde hair blue or green eyes. And you say, that's Jesus. Let's read that part again. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's you. That's you Christians at home right now listening. So now, Clara's friend Elijah is played by R.J. I don't know if it's Kyler or Siler. You have to excuse me. He sees Mary Magdalene being stoned by a crowd of people. These people had bags already stoned. I thought it was funny. They had bags of stones like they walk around Jerusalem carrying. That part was funny. Uh, they had stones. And he runs to protect her. And as the stones are popping both of them upside the head, Mary's jacked up all in her face. Christ comes. He comes and miraculously stops the stones midair. I thought that scene was fantastic. I thought that scene was phenomenal. Matrix even. I was like, whoa! Now that's some good stuff. Now Jesus is played by Nicholas Pinoch. Nicholas Pinoch's a great actor. He played in the film A God Amongst Men. He played in uh, Captain America, the, the, first, the first one. And he also played in the TV show Django. I mean, it's a great scene. Now, we know according to John chapter 8, when you read verse 1 through 11, it does not say that Mary was hit with the stones at all. But the power looked good. I must say it looked great. I was excited when I saw that scene. I loved it. 
Him healing Mary of her wounds. It gave me goosebumps. It gave me goosebumps. I said, whoa! It was a, it, the dramatic effects. It was fantastic. It was great. Okay? Elijah sees this. He runs and tells Clarence what he saw Jesus do, saving Mary Magdalene. But Clarence doesn't believe in the Messiah. All Messiahs are a scam to make that money. That's how Clarence thinks. That's what he wants to do. That's what he does. Clarence is his own money-making Messiah, just like you preachers today. Later on, Clarence's scheme as a self-proclaimed fake Messiah pays off. And he got money, he got some fame, and he confesses his love for Variana. He has the fame and now he got the money, so now he goes to get the girl. The girl, by the way, is the sister of a loan shark that you saw earlier. I ain't going to ruin it for you. You'll see it for yourself, okay? But later on in the film, you'll see Clarence. He has a lot of money, and you'll see him in glimpses. He's in deep thought, and you never know what he's thinking about. Um, Elijah, his friend, is asking him, hey, can you give me some of that money? We got a lot of money, but Clarence has something on, on his mind. Something is troubling Clarence. His people is being racially profiled by Roman guards, just like the police do us here in America today. Okay? And now, he thinks about how he freed Barabbas from slavery. Maybe he could free the other slaves. He had enough money now. So he decides to use his ill-gotten money, his ill-gotten wealth, to free his enslaved people. And I thought that scene was admirable. I love that scene. Because a lot of you at home, you got money, you got fame, you got fortune. Do you help your people? And when I say help your people, help those who can help the rest of the people. No, what do you do? You donate to the uh, Negro College Fund so they can be Negroes. You don't donate to the Israelites, us here at IUIC, who go travel worldwide to wake up our people to God's truth. You don't help us because you know by helping us, it's going to offend your slave master. Okay, so I digress. Clarence decides to free his people and he realizes he's not a nobody. He realizes that he is somebody. Now, he realizes he's not a nobody. All through the film, you'll see that People claim that he's a nobody, and Clarence himself gets depressed and thinks of himself as nobody. Let me tell you something. Never let anyone's opinion of you become your reality. I'm going to say it again. Never let anyone's opinion of you become your reality. This is what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. It reads, I'm just reading the top part. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm going to read it again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If somebody's always telling you you're a nobody, you're good for nothing, you're never going to be nothing, your father was nothing, you're going to be nothing, and you let that marinate, you let that become your reality, you'll grow up and become a nobody, a nothing. you got to let the Bible dictate that you are the chosen people of God. You're the Israelites. You're the elect, okay? You are the chosen. You're the sons and daughters of God Almighty. You are somebody. You're the greatest people on the planet. So, Clarence, as I said, he set himself up as a fake Messiah. And Roman law dictates that a Messiah is a threat to Rome. And that there, and there's a, there is a warrant for both Clarence and Jesus, who Judas Iscariot betrays both of them. I want you all to remember what J. Edgar Hoover said back in the 60s. Look at it. It says, when FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked, what was the single greatest threat to the United States of America? He answered, Negro unity. I want you all to let that ma marinate on your brain. The movie shows a cruel and unusual punishment Rome had upon the Israelites, black people, our people. 
Keep them disorganized and disunified so all messiahs were to be arrested and crucified. Pontius Pilate, played by Jane, James McAvoy, he's a Scottish actor. He played in the film, uh, the movie Split. He played in Glass and X-Men First Class as uh, Professor X. Take a look, that's him. There's a powerful scene where Clarence is being whipped and bleeding and his mother, played by Marianne, Marianne Jean Baptiste, she played in Edge of Tomorrow's Takers and Without a Trace. She cries, she's crying. And she yells out, they always kill our babies. And I tell you, that's such a heart-wrenching scene. That one scene right there. Because the moment she screams that as Clarence is getting whipped, you know what I thought about? I thought about the many mothers of Rasheem Carter, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Oscar Grant, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin, and Sandra Bland, etc., etc., etc. Look. She says, she says to her son Clarence, son, find your way back to me. Find your way back to me. Woo! That, that scene right there. I got goosebumps on that scene. I was like, ah! But unlike the movie, our sons and our daughters never do. They never find their way back to their mothers, their fathers. What do they do when they get killed? They cry to the Lord for vengeance. I'm going to go to Revelation 6 to prove that thing. Revelation 6, showing you that when our people get killed, they cry for vengeance. Luke, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And it reads, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see that right there? Do you see that they often cry for vengeance? I know your pastors never taught you that. But when our people are killed and they go before the Lord, they cry for vengeance against our oppressors. They cry for vengeance against our, our slave masters. That's what they cry for. Another highlight of the film, it pokes fun at white Jesus, played by Benedict Cumber, Cumberbunch. Cumberbunch. You, know, you know him. He played Doctor Strange and he played in the Avengers as Doctor Strange as well. Look at this. This Jesus statue looks like Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. Somebody put this, I saw this online. In the film, he, he, he's actually a bum in the film. And that the real black Jesus blesses him with coins, with money. And in the film, black women wash this bum. They clean his bummy butt up. They even do his hair. And when he gets up, his beard is trimmed. His clothes is clean. His long style girly hair, and he goes around Jerusalem prancing like a girly boy. And women say, look, he looks just like Jesus. Now, it's ironic because in the film, Jesus is black. So put it on the screen. Take a look. He looks just like Jesus. But they're making mockery of black Christians. White Jesus prances and skips through Jerusalem like a fairy and a black women and girly black men run around Jerusalem and follow him all over. It's the scene is funny. It's hysterical. Just like Christian church does today. This part really mocked black Christians because they know it's true. Matthew 24 verse 5. Matthew 24, verse 5, and it reads, this is what Christ said. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. <laughs> so I'm not going to spoil the ending for y'all, but it's good. The ending is good. The book of Clarence, although fictional, it's about faith and redemption. It's a good comedy, drama. I let children go see that film before Passion of the Christ. Learning the difference between belief and knowing something as a fact. I want you to understand that when in the film you learn the difference, the difference between knowledge and belief. Because they asked Clarence, 
Does he believe? He says, no. I know. That was a heavy scene to me. He says, I know. Wow. It's heavy. It's heavy. Y'all just got to see the film. So now, brothers and sisters, let's read the shout out letters and donations. All right. All right. Let's get to the reading of the shout out letters. This first letter reads, Shalom Bishop. It says, Shalom Bishop, myself and my Lord Perry V are so grateful that the Lord led us home to his true word. Words cannot express how thankful we are, realizing that we are God's chosen people. We reside in Beaumont, Texas. However, we've only been once to the Houston school due to my Lord's illness. We are repentant Israelites uh, through the knowledge and we, that we've gained from you. We love studying with you and the other bishops, deacons, and captains uh, via IUIC TV. Please bless our please bless our donation of support to continue reaching the sheep. Pray for us that we get better. Keeping the Sabbath, I no longer work on the Sabbath, uh, nor shop or cooking. I know the Lord will make a way for me and get us back to our like-minded people, congregate. Bishop, in the meantime, we will study, pray, and apply so that we can reach the kingdom. Sincerely, D. Vital, all praises. Most high in Christ, bless. Uh, Okay, I see you got P.S. I'm still waiting on a seasoned daughter, Sarah, to contact me. You have to send your phone number, email. I have your address. I'll have the sisters uh, write you a letter. It'll take a while, a couple of days. But um, next time you write, send your phone number and or email. All right, it'll make things a lot easier and quicker. All right, the next letter reads... Uh, Shalom, brother Israelites. My, may Yahweh continue in his spirit to move your good works all your days. Bless your families and may Yahweh be with you as you travel across the globe to bring our fellow Israelites back to his commands. May peace be upon you always. That's all it says. No name, no signature. But that's what it says. All right. This next one's a card. It says, Bishop Nathaniel, Shalom, the Most High bless you. Uh, as you continue to bless us all with good instruction from the word. Reginald B. All praise. Thank you, Brother Reginald. All praises. All right. This next one is from Sister Minnie. Minnie W. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, and leadership. I pray that this letter finds you all in good health, in mind and body. All praises to the Most High for pouring out his spirit upon IUIC to open the minds of his people to repentance. Shalom. All praise. Thank you, Sister Minnie. All right, this next one reads, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you. Please accept these uh, donations. Thank you for everything you do for Israel. It inspires me. This is Brother Z Zaquan again. Shalom. Thank you, Brother Z Zaquan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All praises. This next one is a card again. It says, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. May the Most High bless you as you continue to bless the nation. Brother Reginald B. Thank you, Brother Reginald. All praises. We want to give a shout out of thanks to Sister Michelle B, uh, Brother uh, H. Cradle, Brother Isaac A, Isaac A again, Sister J. Greenlee, Sister J. Greenlee, shout out of thanks to Sister Gwendolyn T. H. H. Shout out of thanks to D. Vital, Shout out of thanks to Corlys and Sharon. Shout out of thanks to Lenore L.M. of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to Arthur O.S. of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to Kenneth S. Thank you, Kenneth. Shout out of thanks to mm, nobody, no signature, no print, nothing. Okay, let's go on. Shout out of thanks to brother, this says Royal Eye. Shout out of thanks to brother, that might be sister, N. Henderson, N. Henderson. Shout out of thanks to Lorinda E. of Stockton, California. Shout out of thanks to P.G. McKenzie, P.G. McKenzie. 
shout out of thanks to C. Childs. C. Childs, C. Childs again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out of thanks to H. E. Montague. Shout out of thanks to D. Scully. D. Scully, one more time. All praises. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out of thanks to Eureka and Brian. Shout out of thanks to E. Boatwright and E. Boatwright again. Shout out of thanks to Reginald B. Shout out of thanks to, I believe that's J.J. I'm thinking, I'm guessing. Shout out of thanks to, hmm, I want to say Carlton, but I'm not sure on that one. You're from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The, your name is, I see a C. Then the rest goes, blah, 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 blah. but thank you. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Brother Reginald B. Shout out of thanks to A. Holt. Thank you so much. A. Holt again. All praises. Shout out of thanks to the Brooks Company. Shout out of thanks to Juanita H. of Chicago, Illinois. Shout out of thanks to J.J. I think that's J.J. I could be wrong. I see the two J's. I think that's an A. Could be an E. Mmm, not sure. Uh, shout out thanks to, I uh, see an L. I see an E. I see an F, I think. Maybe a J at the end. Wow. Blah. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. J A P. Oh, I got it. Y'all have to forgive me. Shout out thanks to Brother Eddie B. Shout out of thanks to Brother Eddie B. One more time. Shout out of thanks to Sister Teresa A. P. of Burbank, California. Shout out of thanks to Sister Stephanie G. of Alabama. Shout out of thanks to L. M. Vasquez. L. M. Vasquez of Havelock, North Carolina. Thank you. Shout out of thanks to Sister Minnie W. And last but not least, shout out. Shout out to our brother, Johnny D. All praises. Oh, how could I forget uh, Sister Susie A. Shout out thanks to Sister Susie A. All praises. Brothers, sisters, you know I love to say, let's all of us stay healthy. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless you all. Love y'all. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation 